And so if you can anticipate, I think all leaders have to anticipate versus react. And so if you can, if you can develop that skill to be thinking three to five years ahead, I'm thinking in the economy. Okay. What's three to five years in the economy? What's three to five years in, in where I'm going to be as a person, right? I'm always thinking ahead. Am I going to want to be taking more time off? I don't have kids right now. So, okay. If my wife and I, so if you're three to five years ahead, always you can create more momentum and scale. And I think that's, I think anticipation has been a skill that's truly helped me develop and scale. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, your host, also known as the Private Money Authority. And this is the show where we talk about how to raise all the money you would want for your real estate deals without ever asking for money. And of course, I usually have an amazing guest join me here on the show to talk about private money and also other aspects of real estate. And today is no exception. Well, my guest, that's joining us today. At the young age of only 15 years old, he got a loan of $15,000 from his parents. When he was 15 years old with this money from his parents, he purchased his very first martial arts school and graduated from high school that same year after getting this business. So after doing that over the next 15 years, from 15 years old to 30 years old, he expanded to six different brick and mortar locations. And then through COVID, he actually built an online program. Now, his company is called Up Level Martial Arts, and it now has over 1,500 students. And he and his team have trained more than 20,000 students in martial arts in 25 different states and three provinces all over Canada. So throughout my guest martial arts career, he joined this group, this company called Go Abundance, as the youngest member of that all the way back in 2014. And he began to invest in real estate through short-term rentals and also co-living properties. Now he partnered with his wife and now together they own eight short-term rentals and 115 co-living bids. Now he's a coach. He can give you a checkup from the neck up, get you thinking right. And he helps people identify and overcome the obstacles, those things that hold you back in their lives so they can actually pursue their passions. Now he's really got this really cool ability to quickly figure out and diagnose the root of a problem and provide solutions that's tailored to your own individual needs. Now, in addition to that, he's got a book that he's the co-author of, and the name of the book is The Modern Day Black Belt. So he and his father, they share stories in this book on how their homeschooled family of eight kids got involved in martial arts. Now, the book describes the innovative training program called Up Level Martial Arts and it's strengthening families and preparing young people for life. So up level, his company has trained over 15,000 students to become modern day black belts across the U S and worldwide. This book explains how they do it and how you can too. Now in just a moment, you're going to meet my amazing guest. He's going to talk about what in the world martial arts has got to do with real estate investing. His name is Sam Wigert and you're going to meet him right after this. Welcome to the show, Sam. How are you today? Jay, that was quite the intro, my friend. Thank you so much. I'm doing great. I'm honored to be on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm honored to have you on the show in my lands. If you don't have the backstory going on there, Sam, I mean, first of all, you were uh, raised, you, you were homeschooled, you and your, you and your siblings were yes. homeschooled. You got seven siblings, right? I mean, there's eight of you, right? That's right. Eight of us, two parents. Whew. Well, my wife, Carol Joy, she's one of seven. 
and was raised in a house in Wichita Falls, Texas, with 1,012 square feet. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, then I was living yes. in luxury because I had 1,900 square feet with 10 people. So, I, I wow, that's crazy. <laughs> I know it. I know. So, I want to go back to your beginning. Now, uh, we're going to get into the subject, as I said in the intro, of what in the world martial arts has got to do with real estate and and how all that mindset and discipline. Now, now, by the now, by the way, I want to make sure we get this clear for our listeners. Do, do our listeners have to become a black belt before they can actually start implementing your real estate strategies? <laughs> <laughs> the, the short answer to that question, Jay, is no, they don't have to. But you know, oh, black good. belt is a mindset, it's a mentality. I'm sure we'll talk about that today. So if they implement the black belt mindset and mentality, it will definitely help them on their real estate journey. I love it. The black belt mindset mentality. Well, I'll go ahead and share this with you. I wasn't a black belt, but I actually became a brown belt in Taekwondo all the way back at Wake Forest University. I remember those days, uh, Sam, I could, I could stand up next to the wall and raise my leg up and put my foot behind my head with my toes touching the wall. Let's just say, if you did that to me today, I just split in two. That ain't happened today for sure. Jay, I think we got to show some uh, flashback photos of that. I'd like to see that. That's great. I wish I had that. My life. But you know what? I, I've still got my, I can't even remember what you call it. I still got my belts and I still got my white outfit, right? Yeah. yeah the We call it a uniform or gi. Uh, gi is the technical gi. term. Yeah. That's what it was. Well, I want to go back. I want to go back to the beginning before we actually get into this mindset and real estate and, and, and all that. So here you were in a household with seven siblings, your parents, you're being homeschooled. And then for goodness sakes, you're only 15 years old. You get a loan of $15,000 from your parents to purchase your first martial arts school. Tell us that story, how in the world that came about. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a crazy story. And uh, so I started my first martial arts school with a loan of $15,000 from my parents. And, you know, it's funny because I was thinking about your intro, Jay, and you were saying how your show is about how to raise private money without even having to ask. And I was thinking that when I had that first loan, by the way, that was the first money, I guess you could say that I ever raised. I was 15 and I raised 15 grand. Now, granted, it was from my mom and my dad, but I still technically raised it because they helped me buy this school, this martial arts school. But what I did is I actually delegated the asking. I had my martial arts instructor, who was the one who wanted to sell the school. I had him go ask my parents. So I did kind of fit your formula. I didn't have to ask. I had my instructor ask. And my parents are the ones that gave me the loan. So that's kind of an interesting, I don't know. I thought about that when you were giving your intro, but Man, I love it. I, I learned one of the secrets of success that I learned from my dad decades ago was learn how to be a 3D person. What in the world is a 3D person? Dictate, delegate, and disappear. And that's what you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to drop that one down. I'll use that one for sure. That's great. Dictate, delegate, disappear. You so got the story it. is your story. The story is really simple. I mean, really, I, my mom put me in martial arts because I was a homeschooled kid that just needed confidence. I was the typical kind of introverted kid. I didn't fit in like the big five sports, you know, the soccer, the baseball, the basketball, the foot. Like, I didn't fit in any of the big ones. And so I needed something a little bit more individualistic. And so my mom came across this, uh, this guy one day. She was working at the library. And this guy says, hey, we teach martial arts and we teach discipline and self-control. And my mom went, did you say self-control? Because that's what my son Sam needs. And so because I was just a little, I was a little, you know, even though I was introverted, I had a lot of energy and I was always breaking stuff and just getting into trouble. So my mom put me in martial arts and martial arts was that thing for me that gave me focus, right? It's the same thing, by the way, you need to accomplish anything in life, whether that's raising private capital or building a real estate portfolio. And with that focus, my mom said, train here. Hopefully that'll give you the focus. And I really developed my focus. My, my martial arts instructor became like a second father to me. He was really kind of took me under his wing and helped me on this journey. And then he started to get really, really burnt out in the business. And so finally, one day he comes to me and just says, um, hey, I want to sell you the school. And I was so young at the time. But he did the best thing that he could have done for me. He talked to my parents. My parents agreed uh, that they would loan me this money and that I could I could run this. He trained me up. And then right before he left to go fish professionally, of all things, that was his dream. So he sold the school and went off and fished. 
is he said, I'm going to hire you a coach and that's going to be my gift to you when I leave. And without that coach, uh, I wouldn't be sitting here today. His name was uh, Master Arthur. Grandmaster Lawrence Arthur was his name. He was a martial arts coach, but he was also a business coach. And so he just helped me at this really young age um, understand business and marketing and sales and all of these different things that I needed to put together a business and be successful. And so long story short, I scaled that business. I opened up multiple locations across Virginia and then North Carolina. And then we moved into South Carolina. We opened up an online program that served school, uh, students in 25 different states all over Canada. And then we recently, so I scaled it and I recently just exited it, that entire business as of one month ago. We just sold off all the schools and the business and the brand called Up Level, which was uh, which was really a sad day, but that allowed me to transition fully into the real estate coaching world and the real estate uh, acquisition world, which I'm really excited about. Yeah. Well, you just said an important word and that's the word coach. Um, unfortunately yeah. or fortunately, I mean, you know, everything that's happened in the past got us to where we are today, but so what we did in the past then got us here won't necessarily get us there. If you know what I mean, we have to yes. continue to be looking for better ways to grow. Um, but coach, I mean, I did not actually hire a coach to work with me in my real estate business uh, mindset and all that. Now, I was an avid book reader. I mean, my favorite book that changed my life when I was 24 years old is um, titled University of Success hmm. by Og Mandino. Amazing book. It's still in print today. But anyway, I didn't actually start hiring uh, coaches until um, 2003, 2004, when I started in the real estate investing business. And, um, you know, I, I, that just brings to my mind. I mean, when a new real estate investor asks me, you know, what's the best way to start? I tell them, well, the, be the best way to start is get your mindset right. And the best way to get your mindset right is to work with a coach and don't make the messes and the losses of hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars that I did when I very, very, you know, very, very, uh, you know, when I started out at the very beginning. Right. So, so all these, all these martial arts students that up level martial arts had, I mean, 20, training more than 20,000 students. I mean, that's, 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 a, that's a lot of kids, right? So was it all in person, like in the brick and mortar schools that you had? We did a lot of brick and mortar training. And then when COVID came out, we launched an online program that started teaching this hybrid model where it was like live instruction versus and video instruction. Okay. And so I, you know, this was a, this was something I took away from, uh, I don't know if anybody listening has ever been to a mega church and a mega church, you know, a lot of the big mega churches right now, what they do is they'll have a streaming location and they'll stream that the pastor and the band out to a bunch of satellite campuses. So one day I was sitting in church and I just said, you know, this is a really cool model. I bet you I could copy this exact model and apply it to the martial arts business. So that's exactly what we did. We'd make one location kind of the streaming location, blast that out to the two people's computers and phones and all of the other brick and mortar locations we had. So we streamlined the experience instead of every instructor at every school doing it a little bit differently. We installed these big drop down screens. We had, you know, professional lighting, professional music, uh, uh, sound systems. And I really think in, in business and, and Jay, I know you've done this in a, in a bunch of different ways, but in business where you really get these, these kind of exponential jumps is when you start combining things, you start thinking about things a little bit differently, kind of like you're saying about the mindset. And so I took something that nobody had ever thought about doing in martial arts from the church world and said, well, let's take this and stick it over here and let's see if it works. And it worked and it worked beautifully. And that was kind of a, really our secret to success, frankly, is our secret to staying alive during COVID because we were shut down, you know, forcibly for like almost eight months, seven, seven to eight months. So uh, that really kept us alive during that time. Yeah. Isn't it amazing when the problem comes along that um, it actually can be a huge blessing in disguise when you know you got to find a better way and other ways to, right. you know, do what you have been doing. So you touched on it. I heard the word focus, but what do you really mean by black belt mindset? Yeah, I think the best example I could give of this, Jay, would be in martial arts, you learn to break through boards, right? And even if you progress far enough, you learn to break through literally cinder blocks. And so, you know, if you walk up to a cinder block and you throw your hand at it, you're going to break your hand. You aren't going to break the cinder block, right? Like in order to break a board, 
in order to break a board, in order to break a cinder block, you have to be 100% focused on what you're about to do. You have to relax through the movement and you have to then tighten all of your muscles at the moment of impact. That's kind of the, that's, and again, I can talk for an hour about how to break a board and I'll, I'll spare everybody all the details, but ultimately it's about where we're looking. It's about where we aim. And it's about if we're distracted. I mean, I remember during my first black belt test, I was a little distracted. I had just taken like three hours of cardio that they had tried to wear me out. And instead of breaking the board, I ended up breaking my toe. And really it was because I was getting sloppy, right? I didn't have that focus. And you see that so much in real estate. You see that so much in life, in any area of life, whether it's relationships or whether, I know we're talking about raising private money on this show or just acquiring a property. It's so easy to get distracted. It's so easy to have other things kind of jump into our mindset. But, but when you can pinpoint on this is my mission and block out other things, it allows you to achieve tremendous results. And so I think, you know, when it comes to a black belt mindset, there's a million things we could talk about. But the focus of saying this is my goal, uh, I'm not going to stop even at one attempt. I'm going to continue to attempt and continue to hone my focus until I do break through. Literally in martial arts, you're breaking through literally, but in life, more figuratively speaking. You know, that's that's really what it what it's it's it's. It, it's going past, you know, the point of where you think you need to, you know, we would teach that when I would teach to break boards or cinder blocks, you know, you would never just aim at the board. You would always aim three to five inches through it. Right. And so a lot of people, even my staff members, I'll have to coach them on this right now. I'll be like, look, you're, you're just trying, you're just, you're just reaching the goal. You're just, just hitting the goal. We have to go through the goal, right? It's the whole concept of like, I, I just had this coaching session with one of my staff members the other day. I said, hey man, the problem with you is you're, you're trying to reach the goal and you're falling short. I said, falling short is somewhat normal as a human being, but we need to reach for the stars. We need to aim further through the goal. And then if we land in the moon, hey, we still landed at the moon, right? Because this staff member, this particular staff member wasn't creating big enough plans, wasn't, wasn't anticipating enough that things might go wrong. So there's a lot of analogies and, and, and things that we could draw from martial arts and pull it over here, but focus is one. Just a consistent positivity. You know, being a black belt is really not about fighting or hurting people. It's truly about understanding the power you have in front of, in you. And when you understand that, you can uh, support other people. You can encourage other people on the same journey to becoming a black belt. You can even protect other people should you need to. And so a lot of people kind of get that wrong about martial arts. They think, oh, it's, that, that's about fighting. I don't want my kid to do that because they're going to learn to fight. Well, it's actually, you learn to control the power you have inside of you. And so that, there's, a, there's a couple of analogies and I could go further, but those are a couple of analogies of, of how black belt mindset can really support you in, 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 in life and specifically real estate investing. Okay, so let's pull it over now specifically to real estate investing. Think about how you've been successful in real estate investing. Think about what you've got going on in real estate. By the way, what's your focus uh, asset right now? I know you've got uh, short-term rentals. I know you've got co-living beds. I want to talk about that a little bit because a lot of people haven't even heard about that. Yeah. But what is your focus on your real estate asset class now? Yeah, almost 100% co-living right now. We've sold okay. off some of our short-term rentals. We're redeploying that into co-living, which is basically shared housing. Uh, some people call it house hacking, but it really it's a it's an investment strategy that's kind of an affordable housing strategy um, that rents rooms in homes. Okay, so with that being the asset, so let's bring over those mindset characteristics that really lend themselves to being successful in that asset class of real estate. So yeah, focus, but focus on what, right? Yeah. Um, so, so dive, dive a little deeper into that as to how that really translates and comes over to actionable things to do and actual things not to do when it comes to discipline, focus, et cetera. Yeah. I'll, I'll give a specific analogy, Jay. That's such a great question, man. I think it's like, I think it was Rocky. Don't quote me on this exact. I think it was the Rocky movie that he said, you know, it's not how many hits you can give. And I'm probably butchering the quote. He said, it's not how many in a fight. It's not how many hits you can give. It's how many hits you can take and you can keep going. It's how many hits you can take and not fall over. It's how many hits you can take and not give up, right? That was kind of like the Rocky saying, right? And I'm butchering the quote. I wish I had it written down. I'd read it exactly. But I would say, in so let's take an analogy of martial arts to co-living, which I feel like is what you're asking specifically. 
So in martial arts, you do this thing called sparring and you do get hit. <laughs> like you can opt out of it if you want. So I don't want anybody to be like, what? You have to take these. You don't have to, you know, in our schools, we would never like throw you into the ring and just force you to fight. But if you, you have this ability to do sparring where you're going to get hits and I would watch students, kids or whatever, they'd get their first hit and it wouldn't even hurt. Like it would be like the lightest tap, you know, and they're wearing helmets and chest guards and cups and all the protective gear. Right. And they would just break down crying. Right. Or, or even adults, I'd see adults get a little hit and be, oh my gosh, you know? And so what, what's interesting is, you know, I could take a specific example of a situation in co-living where maybe, uh, uh you know, a, a tenant is mad about something, or I have to evict somebody or the house that I thought was going to take $40,000 in rehab is going to cost $80,000 in rehab. Well, what, these are what, all little what, hits, what's right? about that? <laughs> What was that? <laughs> I said, what's new about a $40,000 rehab taking the cost yeah, of money? <laughs> Nothing unless you're a new investor. And then that's where it feels like it hurts, right? Or or maybe I should be at a certain occupancy. You know, right now my company has grown so fast. We thought we were going to be at 500 doors by the end of the year. My property manager called me up about a month ago and said, Sam, we're going to be at 500 doors by the end of March. And we started to look and like, oh my gosh, we have all these rooms to fill. So our occupancy isn't, that feels like a hit because I've got investors, I've got my own properties. So it feels like a hit. And I'll be honest, I want to curl up in the corner and just cry. <laughs> Like, like that's what we like, especially when it's my reputation and it's everything. I'm, I, it's my whole work. It's millions of millions and millions and millions of dollars of real estate that I got to stay full and all these things. Or, or I'll give you another example. And this is a short-term rental example. I know you asked about co-living, but most of my short-term rentals, actually all of my short-term rentals are in this town called Asheville, North Carolina. It's a very popular tourist town on the East coast. They are getting ready to ban today. Actually, I think it might've gone through yesterday. They voted on it. I think yesterday ban short-term rentals in the entire county. It was already banned in the city, but the county is all the, the county is where all my properties are. My point in saying that is again, <laughs> curled up in a ball in the corner, crying my eyes out. That's what I want to do 90% of the time. But in martial arts, you learn, you take the hit and you got to keep on fighting. You got to keep on going and keep moving. And, and I think that that is what martial arts has really taught me to do in a big way doesn't mean I don't cry every once in a while, but I still keep going forward, right? And so that's the focus you just mentioned. That is the grit. Uh, it's the, anti, one of my friends calls it being anti-fragile. <laughs> you know, which I just think is a funny, every time I say that, I think it's funny because I think of fragile, but he calls it anti-fragile. And so I, that's a specific analogy of that I would draw to how being a martial artist or what I would call a black belt mindset, like you mentioned, Jay, at the beginning, helps you show up to your real estate business in a more powerful way. Or when someone just says no to you, you know, a banker just said no to me, real life, right? Just said, hey, I'm not going to finance that deal. Like, come on, man, I need this deal finance. You gave me this. Or at the last minute, they tell you it's going to be 20% more down or, you know, some crazy thing, whatever. This happens all the time. And and sometimes I fall into the trap, Jay, and and I could probably, you know, you're a lot wiser than me, but I'm, I'm still getting my feet under me, you know, in this, I, I've accomplished a lot of success, but I think sometimes I'm still working on my mindset. And, you know, sometimes I think that I can control everything. And sometimes I feel like I should be able to control everything. And I try to control everything. And in real estate and in private capital raising and in business, you can control a lot less than you think you can. And to be able to let that go and say, no matter what comes my way today, this week, this month, I'm showing up like a black belt and a black belt would always give their best no matter what. I will always try my best. I will never give up, right? I'll step up. I'm going to set new standards for myself and for the people around me. And by the way, those last few lines I just said are actually in our student oath. So at the beginning of every class, we would yell that at the top of our lungs, the entire class, like I will step up. I will never give up, you know, and just locking those mindsets in because you're going to want to give up. <laughs> I have never met a real estate investor the war or a capital raiser that at one point in time was like, I think I want to turn in and throw in the towel. <laughs> um, so yeah, man, those are some analogies of how martial arts and business can really intersect. Well, there's so many connections, by the way, Asheville, North Carolina, you know, my wife, Carol Joy and I, we live in Eastern North Carolina, down the coast, oh, Morehead city, Atlantic beach, yeah. right on the coast. We're an hour and a half North of Wilmington, three hours north of Myrtle Beach. Yeah. So, you know, we live at the beach. We live at the beach. Yeah. So if you live at the beach, where do you like to get away? You like to go to the mountains, right? Yeah. 
So Asheville, North Carolina is our favorite getaway spot on the planet. And here's why, in addition to the weather and right. the mountains, our favorite getaway ever since, oh my lands, the early 2000s, maybe 2001, 2002, is the Grove Park Inn. Uh, it goes back to the early 1900s. And the spa, my lands, that spa that was put in there 20 years ago cost $31 million. Now there's waterfalls inside the mountain. So if you're listening to the show and you've never been to the Grove Park Inn in Asheville, North Carolina, you for sure want to go. But yeah, and, and you and your wife and family, you all live in Charlotte now, don't you? I'm sitting in Charlotte right now, but I, you know, I, I made that hand gesture when you said Grove Park because that was my first ever date with my wife. That was really? where I got engaged was at the Grove Park, and I was just there last week. I had a piece of cheesecake right there next to the big fireplace, and I, I'm not drinking alcohol until the 31st. But I had a mocktail as well, and it was it, it's it truly is a magical place, man. You said it. You said it well. And let me tell you something: when you stay on the concierge level in room 1836, you don't go back down. Let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's amazing. Great. So anyway, back back to um, real estate investing and and our main topic here. So as you were talking about the analogy between martial arts and real estate investing two words came to my mind. Actually, three words came to my mind. One was resilience, which is what you were talking about, yeah. being yeah. resilient against the obstacles that come your way, being persistent no matter what, always keeping your, you know, your hand to the wheel. And another uh, word came to my mind that I'd like for you to speak about a second, Sam, and that is distractions. You know, distractions or a distraction is the opposite of focus. And for all of us entrepreneurs, we're all smitten with this disease called shiny object syndrome. We're all smitten with it, uh, except maybe you, Sam, because you got all that focus. But, um, <laughs> but you know, and then, and then managing or controlling your time and what you're doing with your time. Um, speak to that about how distractions can get in the way and really being very, very intentional and focused about how you're using your time. Yeah. Jay, that is such a good question, man. And I, I feel that I feel that this is one of the biggest things that we face in America, especially with, with my generation. So you call the millennials or the Gen Z generation. It, it does feel like distraction and you know, the TikTok generation, the social media generation suffers from this a lot. And I'll tell you where I first started to realize how big of a problem this was. I read a book that I highly recommend written by Napoleon Hill. So it's the same guy who wrote Think and Grow Rich, which is a very popular personal development book. Um, and he wrote another book called Outwitting the Devil. And it's a- I just got that book three years ago. Really? I, yeah, it's one of my favorite. And if you listen to it on Audible, so what, what the book is about is- it's a, it's a, it's an allegory. I think is the word. It's like a story, like a fake made up story where Napoleon Hill has an audience with the devil and he, he makes a deal with the devil. I forget what he gives the devil, but he basically gets the devil. He forces the devil to tell him the truth. So he imagine having an audience with the devil. You can ask him any question you want and he has to tell you the truth. And in the audiobook, as, as an aside, and the audiobook, when the devil talks, it's like this super cool, like deep, dark voice. So you got to listen to the audiobook because it's like a fun book to listen to. But one of the questions he asks the devil is he goes, tell me, why are most men and women not successful in life? Why do they fail so much? What tactics do you use, devil? And the devil, and you know, it's kind of a dramatic story. The devil's like, no, I don't want to tell you. I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to give away my secret sauce. And he's like, hey. Don't forget our deal. You told me you tell me the truth. How do you keep so many people from, from living their purpose and from living everything they're supposed to be in life? How do you do it, devil? And the devil's like, all right, I promised to tell you the truth. So he's like, my number one tool is distraction. And he says, I realized, this is the devil talking. He says, I realized that if I, that I don't have to actually destroy people's dreams. I just have to show them a bunch of other dreams. And if I can do that, and he gets real sinister. He's like, I'll destroy all their dreams. 
Mm. And I remember when I was reading this book, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I just like almost started crying because I was just like, holy crap. Like, that's what we get. We get, you meant, you said, Jay, you said shiny object syndrome, but it's like so true, man. It's like, there's, there's this and there's this and there's this. And we sabotage ourselves. No one has to come in and destroy our dream. We do it ourselves. No one has to come in and destroy our dream of building a real estate portfolio or our dream of raising capital. All the, all the devil, you know, and I'm putting the devil in quotation marks. I'm, I'm, this is, it's not really a religious book. It's more about like, who's, what's this thing that keeps us from our potential is really what the book is about. And it's all, you know, we do it to ourselves. We, we do real estate for six months, a year. We take a course and, and we say the course didn't work because we tried it for a year. And I know a year sounds like a long time, but it's not in the grand scheme of things. You know, some of the richest, most wealthy nine figure entrepreneurs that I know, they've told me, they say, Sam, we think in terms of decades now, we don't think even in months, we don't even think in quarters, we don't think in years, we think in decades. What's my project for the decade? And I think if more people were to think like that, because we all overestimate what we can do in a year or two, all of us, most all of us, very common, but we drastically underestimate what we can do in a decade or even a half decade, if we stay focused, but nobody stays focused, Jay. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, that's the key. Exactly. So as soon as you ask that question, man, that story popped into my head and it's, it's a powerful, powerful story and book. Highly recommend people read it to stay on target. Yeah. One thing that you are really good at is not only scaling your own business, but working with other real estate entrepreneurs on how to scale their business. You mentioned a few minutes ago that you were looking to, you know, really scale by the end of this year. And, you know, your team member says, we're going to be at, you know, we're going to be at that number of rooms by the end of March. What are one, two or three um, from your experience, you know, strategies, secret sauces, whatever, as to how you go about scaling your business so quickly? Mm. Wow. <laughs> That's a good question, man. So many directions I could take that. So what are one or two things, my secret sauces to scaling so quickly? Um, my first guess would be you're not doing it all by yourself. <laughs> yeah, I am not doing it all by myself. That is a hundred percent true. I've got an amazing team that supports me. They're just t total badasses. So yeah, aligning yourself. That that lesson took me a long time to learn to try to delegate out. I know <laughs> delegate, dictate and and disappear. I'm going to remember that. Uh because I've I've learned I've had to be good at that in some capacities because I I will reach my personal capacity very quickly. You know, I, I the first thing though that comes to my mind is really just you know, I, I, there's this movie, I think it's uh a thousand leagues under the sea or something. Anyway, there's a line in the movie. It became very famous. The line, the guy said, uh, the guy was getting attacked. They were all in this submarine and he said, and they were starting to get attacked. He said, damn the tor torpedoes full steam ahead. I might've butchered that, but, but that's, I think where it came from. And in this movie, he's like, I know we're getting attacked, but there's where we need to go. Let's keep going. And so one of the things I think I've been good at is Hey guys, we're going to consistently grow through problems. And a lot of times I think when people find a problem, they go, okay, we got to fix this problem, fix this problem, fix this problem. I'm like, let's fix the problem, but we're going to continue to grow. It's a little bit more of like the startup mentality of like, we're going to build the plane as we're flying. We're going to build, we're going to jump off the cliff and then build this parachute. Now, obviously that does have some horrendous endings sometime, and I'm not recommending that for everybody. But if you're asking kind of what have I done, I think it's just because I have prioritized a lot of growth and moving forward at a rapid pace. And so um, I think if you have a growth mindset, if you're constantly moving forward, if you're constantly looking for the edge, then I think growth kind of happens, can happen very naturally. I think if you find a way, my second thing, and I'll kind of turn it back over to you after this, but I think my second thing would just be, I'm always looking for opportunities where there can be true win-wins. So right now, I believe, like, for example, in the real estate market, I, I do co-living, so I do room rentals. And it's truly like a win for investors because we're tripling the cash flow on a co-living home versus renting it out as a single family home, okay? So we're so investors are winning, but then guess who else is winning? The tenants, because we're introducing lower price points into the rental market. So I can rent a room for $800, where a studio in my town might go for $1,500. So I'm introducing lower price points that didn't even exist because a studio apartment is usually usually the cheapest thing in town. 
So I think if you can, I think if you can think about your business and say, if I got to create something that's a true win-win, it's got to add tons of value, not a little bit of value. It's got to add tons of value. And if I can add more value, then I can, I can scale faster. You know, I think when you try to find little wins, then those things sometimes scale slower. I think the reason we've grown so fast is because investors see it. They're like, yeah, triple like, and I had to get creative to figure out the co-living model. It wasn't like it just popped into my head. It took years and I had to get very creative. So investors see it as a win and tenants see it as a win. Okay, this is great. We can scale as much as we possibly can, right? And I think that's really, 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 really the key. Uh, I, I wanna say one more thing really fast. And that is, are you ahead? You know, I think it's really important for people to kind of be thinking like maybe two to five years ahead. And I think that's been a key to our success too. So I started to recognize that short-term rentals, which still do well, but if you look at all the regulation coming down for short-term rentals and you look at the average daily rates, which have dropped, when you look at uh, occupancy, which has dropped, I started to see like, okay, wait a minute, this is probably not where I want to be positioned. And I was probably two years ahead of that. So we started selling off our portfolio. I had a friend coming to the other day and said, Sam, didn't you just sell like your three biggest properties? I was like, yeah. He's like, how did you know that? You sold literally at the top of the market right before it came down. I was like, I've been thinking about this for a long time. And now I'm positioning it into, I'm positioning that money into something that I think will be big in three to five years. Co-living is not big now. It's really a small niche asset class with a bunch of weirdos like me trying to make it popular. Right. But like, that's where it's going. And so if you can anticipate, I think all leaders have to anticipate versus react. And so if you can, if you can develop that skill to be thinking three to five years ahead, I'm thinking in the economy. Okay. What's three to five years in the economy? What's three to five years in, in where I'm going to be as a person, right? I'm always thinking ahead. Am I going to want to be taking more time off? I don't have kids right now. So, okay. If my wife and I, so if you're three to five years ahead, always, you can create more momentum and scale. And I think that's, I think anticipation has been a skill that's truly helped me develop and scale. Very, very interesting. Last question before we wrap up. And this is like a very important question. Oh, by the way, we got comments coming in from the live stream. We got um, a Bayer saying informative. We got Gotronic saying, Hey, what's up, Jay? The name that tune piano guy. <laughs> that's right. That's right. In fact, we might play a little name that tune at Family Mastermind next week. So, Sam, you work with real estate investors, uh, entrepreneurs, and you help people become financially free. You help them get unstuck. You help them. You help them stay focused. But from from your coaching standpoint on working with entrepreneurs. What would you say is your superpower that you're really able to help your clients achieve by working with you? Yeah, get, getting getting people into action. You know, people buy courses all that's my superpower. I think people buy courses all the time, people hire coaches all the time. People say those courses don't work all the time. People say those coaches don't help them all the time. But what I've what I feel like I've done a good job of if, if someone's going to coach with me, you're going to move forward. <laughs> and I'm not saying I like force anybody. I'm not like, but I, but I, I will playfully threaten to uh, send ninjas to their house. Right. But I, but I understand the value of momentum. If I can get someone taking a little step forward and then another little step and another little step. Now the ball, so to speak, proverbial ball is rolling and I can move that ball forward with that person. So I think so many people focus on, perfect action. Whereas I just flip those two, let's take action and we'll perfect it along the way. And uh, I, it, when people do that, they start to realize like, wait, life isn't quite that scary. I can just take action. I can mess up a little bit. It's okay to do that. And so obviously there's strategies helping them with co-living, which I, I probably know more than almost anybody in this market right now, because I've been doing it for a decade and a half, kind of unbeknownst I was doing it for a decade and a half, but, but ult I can help with strategies and helps people support them. Um, and make connections to guys like you who are the private money experts. You know, I can do all of that for my clients, but ultimately I think being like, you're with me, we're moving forward. And it's why <laughs> I got a bunch of flack and I'll, I'll end with this. You've been so generous with your time too, Jay. But uh, someone told me the other day, they said, hey, your program should have an unlimited time. You know, Pace Morby's program, you enroll in it and it, it's forever. You don't ever have to renew. I And I, I, this is just my perspective. I hope I'm not making anybody angry. I know Pace Morby's a member of the family mastermind. <laughs> But I was, but I also was saying like, I was like, cool. That sounds like if there's no sense of urgency, a lot of times people don't take action. 
And so for, for a program, when people enroll with me, I, I want it to be a sprint with me. Hey, we're going to go, we're going to learn. We're going to take action. We're going to get your first property. My whole promise in my program, like the promise I make is that you will have your first property. It will be completely full by the end of the program of your first co-living property. And that's my zero to hero promise. That's my zero to hero guarantee, or they don't pay another dime to continue in the program until we coach coach until they are successful. And so I say that to say, I want there to be that sense of urgency, right? I want them to have that. Okay. I got to go. And that's one of the things I think I'm really good at. <clears throat> I love it. Our good friend, Tom Kroll, who is also a member of family mastermind. I know Tom. Yep. His, his, uh, I, I love that guy. My lands. I love Tom Crow. And I've heard him say it a thousand times, massive, imperfect action. Yeah. <laughs> massive, imperfect Beautiful. action. Beautiful. So Sam, I know we got people here that want to connect with you. I mean, you've got a magnetic personality who would not want to hang around you and yeah. to learn about this niche of co-living that hardly anybody else is doing or knows anything about. How do people connect with you and learn more? Yeah, man. Thank, thank you for the opportunity to be on the show, Jay. This was so fun going back and forth on you and getting to know you a little bit and the Grove Park and the piano. It's, we have a, some cool connections there. Um, if people want to follow me or just learn more about co-living, Instagram is probably best. It's just uh, at Sam Wiegert. There you go. They threw it up on the screen. Sam. And then the last name is W-E-G-E-R-T. And then uh, if, if people want to learn more about co-living, uh, once a month or once every other month, I do these things called five-day challenges, which is just, it's a free event where people can like deep dive into co-living and see if they want to add it to their real estate portfolio, convert their real estate portfolio and see how they can double, triple, or even sometimes quadruple their returns that they're currently getting. And so if they go to scaleyourrealestate.com, they can get on the waiting list for the next challenge. That's scaleyourrealestate.com. I love it. Sam, thank you so much for your time. And I can't wait to see you in person next week at our Family Mastermind Conference. Me too, brother. Me too. Be, be great. All right. God bless you, Sam. Thank God you so much you. for joining me. And there you have it. Another amazing episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. We really appreciate your comments. If you happen to be uh, listening on whatever your favorite platform is for podcasts, podcast. Be sure and follow me. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Hit that bell so you get notified of the next amazing Private Money uh, podcast that's coming up. We do these twice a week on the podcast. Every Monday morning, we release it super early. And every Thursday morning, don't miss out. I'm Jay Connor, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your personal development and your business to the next level. I'll see you right here on the next Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jayconner.com slash money guide. That's J-C-O-N-N-E-R.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jayconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with J.